Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please let me know. Hello everyone, good evening, good evening. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please let me know guys. Good evening everyone, good evening. It's clear. Thank you so much Sadesh for pointing it out. All fine, Arshit, thank you so much. No issues, Kushal, thank you so much. Okay, so now that you are able to hear me, uh, I'm so sorry I was uh, not able to take up a class yesterday. Uh, but uh, yeah, the classes will be regular from today itself guys. There will be no issues from my end at any point of time. <clears throat> They, I was a bit busy with work yesterday and I was hence not able to take up uh, the class. Okay, so I was running a bit late from the office as well. So I thought that it's better not to like end the class so that you are not missing out on the attendance. It's better to just postpone it for the next day itself. Okay, so um, how are you guys? Everything is fine. How was your day guys? Uh, so yesterday because I was not able to take any class but were you able to revise something? Like were you able to, whatever we had studied in the last two days, were you able to revise that? Whether, whether you were able to learn it guys, could you let, let me know? Were you able to uh, like do it guys? Thank you so much for asking. My throat is all right right now. Like a bit of pain is still there, but uh, nothing that I can uh, handle. I've taken up some medication for it. So even if my voice is sounding a bit odd uh, today, please do ignore it. Okay. Uh, just try to focus upon what you are here to learn and that would be more than sufficient for everybody. Okay. Okay. Great guys. Amazing. 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 Uh, This is a second guys. Okay. Is pen that you Thanks. Thank you. No issues. Great guys. So shall we start with our today's class guys? Please let me know. We started that today. Can you guys let me know what have we studied in the past two days, guys? Can you guys let me know uh, what have we studied in the past two days so that we are able to start with today's class? Just let me know, guys, what we have studied in the past uh, two days so that we are able to start with uh, today's class, guys. In the meanwhile, while you're telling uh, that, I'll just switch on the AC. The hoodie is making it a bit uh, hot right over here. Okay, Python basics, data variables, data types. Okay, which are the data types that we have uh, studied up till now, guys? Can you guys let me know? Which are the data types that we have studied up till now, guys? Can you guys let me know? Variable, keywords, integer, floats, intent float. Great, guys. Amazing. So let's start off with our today's class, guys. We'll be moving further. Okay, multiple assignment operator. That's great. So we're moving towards our other concepts that is strings and uh, boolean data types as well. We'll be learning upon that and we'll be continuing from right over there guys. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So let's get started guys. Let me just open up the notes. Uh, if you are able to see, so this is the video that you guys are seeing right over here. Okay. If I'm opening this on my laptop. This is the video that you are currently watching, right? This is the video that you are currently watching. If you go to the description of the video itself, guys, you will be able to see that there's a link called as notes. Okay, there's a link called as notes right over here. So I've already uh, like uploaded the notes in the description itself, guys. So you can access the notes from right over here. So from today onwards, I don't have to post it again and again on the live chat. Okay, so uh, is this fine, guys? Ayush Kumar, this is day three. Okay, Ayush Kumar, this is day three as you're able to see from the name of the class itself. 
this is day three itself okay no issues in that great so let's open up google collab guys okay, let us open up google collab i've already opened up the live chat right over here okay i've already opened up the live chat right over here guys uh, sorry <laughs> the notes right over here inside of google collab uh okay so are you planning to take one day extra uh, so amujit uh, as you are able to see this is day three the number of days will be seven so do not worry like i i haven't like two days have happened this is the day three so you don't have to worry about it okay just uh make sure that you are attending the classes on time itself okay great so right over here i'm just clicking on connect so that we are able to connect to the servers at google's end and i'll just scroll down below to the point that way we have studied okay guys so we have covered integers and floats up till here i guess okay we have covered up till here right guys we have covered up till here right guys please do let me know if i'm wrong guys um moses uh, right now the class has just started so you can just like focus on the class right now okay great guys so we'll be moving on from right over here now please remember that uh, right now in a few minutes i'll be telling a very important point when it comes to internships okay when you are applying for jobs or for internships itself uh, you will be giving an interview in the interview you will be asked questions related to python now when they are asking you questions related to python this interview question is one of the most famous question not the most famous question because it is not known by many people okay uh, but one of the most used questions in most of the big tech companies if you're applying to companies like google microsoft amazon samsung uh, walmart flipkart paypal if you're applying for these big tech companies at any particular point of time then this is a question that will be coming right over there and most of the people don't know the answer about this because there's no course on this planet that actually teaches teaches it even i didn't know about it i started to like read a lot of books on python one of my like my favorite books that i have um that i would suggest to you guys is also like uh, automating boring stuff with python automating the boring stuff with python guys this is one of the best books that you can study uh, related to python itself so that is what i'm suggesting for you guys if you guys want to increase your knowledge in python at any particular point of time please do give this a try okay please do give this a try this is one of the best books that you can learn uh, python from okay so these this concept that is there okay this is being asked in big tech companies and students don't know the answer about it because they don't go in a lot of depth to the uh, language itself and it's a very important concept to learn about as well so uh, please make sure that um, whatever we are i'm going to teach you in the next 5 to 10 minutes you are able to understand it as much as possible if you are not able to understand it as well do not worry about it just uh, memorize it okay at least try to memorize it as, uh, okay that is what i'll be explaining it to you in such a way that you are able to understand it okay even like a person who has the basic knowledge of uh, sixth and seventh standard mathematics will be able to understand it but still if you're not able to understand it no issues in that try to make sure that you are able to memorize what i'm saying okay uh kayal the uh as you are able to see right over here is the youtube video youtube video can increase the settings of the quality of the video to 720p or 1080p as well okay great so is this just for coding or engineers or also for data scientists analysts etc since i am an economic student so can it be important for the interviews that i am appearing in so for those people who are appearing in interviews for data analysis that is data analyst data engineering machine learning engineer data scientist um, and uh, even software engineers all these positions or python developers these are the positions wherein questions related to python will be asked to you guys and yes it will be important for your interviews purpose if you so i haven't attended the last session will i be able to receive the certificates at the end please reply akash uh, uh, if you have attended all the sessions thoroughly and there is no issues with your attendance okay uh, if one of the days you are missing it out except on the day 5 and 6 we can't take that into consideration okay you don't have to worry about it we usually take this into consideration as well okay great guys thank you so much a uh, wise guy of python uh, case sensitive leela why is your name leela the person who created you named you leela right so the person who created python made it in such a way that was guido van rusen 
Okay. Okay. Uh, no issues in that, Nawab. I hope to see you in the future boot camps as well. Uh, we are going to start off our collaboration with Amazon very soon uh, for these boot camps. So let's see how that goes on. We are in the final stages for that. Please do pray that it goes through so that you guys are able to get uh, Amazon certificates also from the next boot camp that you are attending. Okay. Okay. So let's get started with uh, the class itself, guys. Okay, so yesterday, uh, so you can even convert an integer to a float and a float to an integer as well. Please remember this guys, let me just open up paint so that it's easier for me to explain you guys. Okay. Uh, Nanda Francis, that's a good theory, but uh, what about those languages that don't consider it to be case sensitive? Okay, what about those languages? So always the better option is whoever created, he thought something about it. You don't have to apply a lot of brain. Uh, right over there. Okay. Is that your name is my name is Sharasana. There's no backstory that you need to know about it. Okay. Okay, great. So right over here, guys, in a few minutes, I'll be telling you guys about the interview question right now. Focus upon this. You can convert a float. Okay. You can convert a float to an integer and in the vice versa way, you can convert an integer to a float as well, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? You can convert an integer to a float and an in, uh, and a float to an integer as well at any particular point of time, guys. For example, we are having a float. Let's assume 228.9. Okay, we are having a float that is 28.9. I want to convert it into integer. I want to convert it into, into integer itself. So I will be right. So for example, um, we will be writing float. Sorry, we have to convert the float to an int. So int, okay. I want to convert this float to an integer. So the code that I will be writing for that is integer and then the number that I want to convert into float, oh, sorry, integer. Okay, the, the number that I want to convert into integer itself, guys, that is 28.9. So this is the code that you have to write to convert a float to an integer. Okay, this is the code that you have to write to convert the float to an integer. The answer that will come up will be 28. The answer that will be coming up will be 28, guys. Okay, whether it is 28.0, 28.3, 28.5, whatever the float number is, all these when converted to integer will be 28 itself. Okay, will be 28 itself. This is not, we are not rounding it off. Okay, we are not rounding it off at any point of time. Did I say that we are rounding it off? No, what I said, I want to convert a float to an integer. Whenever you are converting a float to an integer, whatever exists after the decimal point, whatever exists after the decimal point will directly be removed. Whatever exists after the decimal point will directly be removed. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Similar to that, if I want to convert an integer to a float, okay, I'm having integer like assume 3. I want to convert it into a float itself. So the code that I will be having to write will be float, F-L-O-A-T, float, because I want to convert the integer to a float itself, okay? Right over here, put it up your number, that is 3 that you want to convert, okay? And then you will be able to get the answer as 3.0, okay? 3.0. So whenever you want to convert an integer to a float, you just have to add 0 0.0 at the end. Whatever the number is in integer, you just have to add 0 0.0 at the end. That is how you will be able to convert an integer to a float. Okay. Let's look at this from a coding perspective as well. Right over here, we want to convert an integer that is 3 to a float and we want to convert 28.9 as an float to an integer itself. So if I'm running this particular line of code right over here, you are able to see that you're getting 3.0 and 28 as our answer. Okay. I'm getting 3.0 and 28 as an answer itself. Okay. Uh, is it the same when it does more than one uh, number after decimal point? Of course, you can just take it up to any particular number. The answer will still remain the same. Okay, the answer will still we'll just remove everything after the decimal point. We'll just remove everything after the decimal point, guys. Okay, great. Now comes the important question that I want you guys to understand. Please focus upon this very, 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 very carefully. 
can we round off in python sir yes of course you can round off in python there is a library for that called as math.round that you can utilize you can do a google search upon it to understand how that works okay so right over here as you are able to see this is the question that is going to be asked to you guys in the interviews for big tech companies so please make sure that you are able to understand this to the highest level possible okay great so another point that you need to keep in mind is floats are an approximation to the number they represent this is the line that you need to memorize first of all before understanding this line before moving further before doing all the calculations and everything testing if i am right or wrong first you need to memorize this line that floats are an approximation to the number they represent are you guys able to understand this please do let me know please make sure guys that you are able to memorize this line floats are an approximation to the number they represent i am guaranteeing you one point right over here that this particular line if you are asking it to any of your professors as well they will also not know it because what i have seen usually is that professors focus upon unnecessary things they are never going to help you guys out in the interviews as well they focus upon like ki okay if you are doing this particular stuff why is it happening okay we don't need to know why this is happening what we need to do is that this is happening and this is how we are going to utilize it further on but still your professor will still not know this that floats are a approximation to the number they represent this is something that only those people know who have studied from proper books who have all like made a lot of like code has written a lot of code at any particular point of time so please make sure you are switching on just like mohammed fazal has said chatur mood okay just open up a chatur mood memorize this line floats are an approximation to the number they represent once you have learned this now we'll be talking about what what i'm trying to say right over here okay so let's assume that you are writing a number okay let's assume that you are writing a number 0.23 okay x is equals to 0.23 okay uh vashnavi uh, you don't have to make it clear you just have to memorize that line i am making that clear right now okay first memorize that line guys without memorizing we will not start with it okay you don't need to understand it right now understanding i will be giving it to you guys right now itself first memorize this line floats are an approximation to the number they represent okay floats are an approximation to the number they represent first memorize it once you have memorized it then i will explain it to you guys what is happening right over here okay so let's assume that we are writing a particular code x is equals to 0.23 okay 0.23 is a float am i right or wrong guys 0.23 is a float am i right or wrong guys please let me know great now you see that you have written 0.23 but inside python inside the brain of python inside the memory of python this 0.23 is getting saved as 0.23 0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
Now, once I have told you guys to memorize this, but why should you trust me? You should check this out. Okay, we should first check this. This is a hypothesis. We need to check this hypothesis. Does this really happen? Or is this particular person just bullshitting us? He's lying his way through the uh, corporate ladder. No, 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 no. Let's first check this out first of all. Okay, so we'll go back to our code. Okay, we will go back to our code. What I've done right over here is 0.23. This is a float. I've added it 30 times. You can calculate how many 0.23s are there. You can just calculate how many 0.23s are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 30, 0.23. Okay, 30, 0.23 right over here. So 0.23, 30 times. According to my mathematics, what I know about, I don't know anything about Python. According to my mathematics, 0.23 multiplied by 30 times should be equivalent to 6.9. Am I right or wrong, guys? Tanya, I've just started to explain it. Okay, I've not even started to explain it. I'm just giving you an example that this happens. Okay, so let us see right over here. According to us, according to our mathematics, 0.23 multiplied by 30 is 6.9. That is what my mathematics says. Now let us check if that is true or not. Right over here, as you are able to see, there are two double equal to signs. Okay, this is not a single equal to. A single equal to sign is called as an assignment operator. When you assign the RHS to the LHS, okay, this is an equality sign. It checks whether the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side or not. The double equal to symbol that you are able to see right over here checks whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not. It's a comparison operator. It checks the equality right over here. If both the sides are equal, okay, both the sides are equal, then we get the answer as true. If both the sides are not equal, then we get the answer as false. Okay, so right now, according to our mathematics, according to our mathematics, the answer should be true. Okay, the answer should be true that yes, 0.23 added 30 times should be equivalent to 6.9. Okay, yes, Sadar, you are absolutely uh, correct. Okay, so if I am running this particular line of code, according to me, the answer, according to my mathematics, the answer should have been true. But when I am running this particular line of uh, code, I am getting the answer as false. That the LHS is not equal to the RHS. Okay, that is the LHS is not equivalent to the RHS. What happened? Is my maths wrong or something? Let us check what is the answer that we are able to get by adding 0 0.23 30 times. Okay, right now I am just adding 0 0.23 30 times. So if I am running this particular line of code, you are able to see that my answer comes out to be 6.9, a lot of zeros and then 6 at the end. Okay, 6.9, a lot of zeros and 6 at the end. Where did this 00006 came from? Where is this 00000006 came from? We have no idea. But one thing that I have already proven, that is my point, that floats are an approximation to the number they represent. And 0 0.3 is saved in such a way that is a lot of zeros at the end and then some decimals that is getting added up to such a point where Python is not able to ignore it. Where Python is not able to ignore it, and that is the reason why we are getting 6.9000000006 right over here. Okay, now we have proved that Python for in Python floats are an approximation to the number they represent. So our memorization is correct. But now we need to understand why does it happen? Okay, now we need to understand why does it happen. Up till now, I've proven this that this happens. Okay, up till now. We have proven that this happens. Okay. So now we need to understand why does it happen? Okay. Shall we proceed to that particular question guys? Shall we proceed to the question? Why does it happen? Shall we proceed to the question? Why does it happen guys? Great. So let's try to understand something. Now we will go back into mathematics itself. We will go back into mathematics itself. Let's assume that you are having two numbers that you need to multiply. Okay. We need to multiply two numbers. Let's assume the multiple that we want to do is 2.3 multiplied by 2.3. Okay. 2.3 multiplied by 2.3 simple calculation right my maths is not that great so i'm going to utilize a calculator to do it 
ओके ट्वेंटी थ्री मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टू पॉइंट थ्री इज इक्वल्स टू फाइव पॉइंट टू नाइन ए इज इक्वल्स टू फाइव पॉइंट in mathematics okay this is not related to python in any way this is a concept of precision that comes from mathematics itself okay mathematics itself okay so right over here as you are able to see g 2.3 multiplied by 2.3 should be equal to 5.29 but you maintain the precision that is there so for this particular decimal number you are having just one decimal point Am I right or wrong, guys? For this particular number, zero point two three, you only have one decimal point. Am I right or wrong, guys? Please do let me know. Am I right or wrong, guys? Please do let me know. For this particular number as well, we only have one decimal point. So, what is the precision of this question? What is the precision of this question? The precision of this question is the maximum decimal point that we have. So the answer, if the both the things that we are using right over here, this is also one decimal point. This is also one decimal point right over here. So when we are multiplying it, the answer can also be having a precision of just one decimal point. So instead of getting, okay. Instead of getting the answer as five point two nine, because the precision of the question was just one decimal point, our answer will be five point two itself. Our answer will be five point two itself. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. Because the decim, because the precision of the question, both the numbers in the question had a decimal. Point of just one decimal precision of just one itself, so the answer can also have a decimal precision of one. If there are two human beings that are there, okay, if there are two human beings that are there, they have two arms, two legs, two arms, two legs. The kid will also be a human. It won't be a giraffe, right? The kid will also be a human. It won't be a giraffe. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say right over here. If the number has a one decimal point precision, then the next number also has a one decimal point precision, then the answer will also have one decimal point precision itself. That is what is happening inside of computers. That is what will happen inside of computers. This is a fact. Okay, this is not something that we can like debate upon. This is just a fact. Okay. to make sure that this does not happen okay to make sure that this does not happen okay so uh, but why not 5.3 a widget because that 9 isn't getting calculated itself that 9 isn't getting calculated itself it just like it is just calculating up to the second decimal uh, up to the first decimal point it's again it's not about rounding things off okay do not put Like this is a computer. It does not has brain. Okay, it is a computer. It does not has brain. It just does what it is told to do. You need the answer up till one decimal point. I will give the answer up till one decimal point. He is not going to think that okay, okay, this number is closer to zero point two. I will give the answer zero point. No, that is something that humans do. Okay, it's something that humans do. This is a computer. So that is the reason why when you are writing 2.3, when you are writing 2.3, floats are being saved in the memory as 00000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
वन फाइव वन टू नाइन जीरो 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 ओके सो दैट विल बी दी आंसर दैट यू विल बी एबल टू गेट ओके दैट विल बी दी आंसर दैट यू विल बी एबल टू गेट नाउ दिस एंटायर थिंग इज सो स्मॉल दिस एंटायर थिंग इज सो स्मॉल दैट पाइथन इग्नोर्स इट ओके दिस एंटायर थिंग इज सो स्मॉल दैट पाइथन इग्नोर्स इट यूजली and hence you are able to get the answer as 5.29 itself hence you are able to get the answer as exactly 5.29 but in other case when we saw the example of 0.23 getting added 30 times in that we python then this number this last digits got so big that python was not able to ignore it okay it got so big that python was not able to ignore it Usually these type of calculations, this last digit is so small that Python just ignores it itself. Python just ignores it itself. But in our case, in our scenario, zero point two three added so many times, then this number got so big at the end that Python was not able to ignore it. Okay, Python was not able to ignore it. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. You guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Again, just try to understand the concept right over here. Just try to understand the concept right over here, guys. That is much more important. Now, now that you have understood it. Okay, now that you have understood it, uh, let's try to. Now that was an example. Okay, if you are calculating this, of course this is not going to be the case. This one point one two three is going to be get multiplied a lot more times, so that is totally different. But whatever the case is, uh, you have understood the core concept about this. Okay, that is the main point. That mathematics is totally wrong. You guys can relate to it as well. Okay, because one two three at the end that gets multiplied by back again, so the number will be totally different. Okay, but uh, ओके सो निमिषा गुप्ता ओके सो नि नरसिम्हा गुप्ता ओके नरसिम्हा गुप्ता डू नॉट वरी अबाउट इट ओके आई विल मेक श्योर दैट यू आर नॉट गेटिंग अटेंडेंस टुडे इवन इफ यू फेल इट अप थैंक यू सो मच निमिषा गुप्ता नरसिम्हा गुप्ता फॉर बीइंग देयर इन द क्लास आई एम प्रोवाइडिंग द अदर स्टूडेंट्स सम एंटरटेनमेंट एज़ वेल ओके सो दैट इज द बेसिक केस राइट ओवर हियर ओके now what our aim is to understand ओके आवर एम राइट नाउ इज टू अंडरस्टैंड अ न्यू गुगली Hey, a new Google in uh, most of you guys must have used at any particular point of time or seen uh, cricket as well. I'm not that much into sports. Okay, as you are able to see, I'm very fat. Okay, I don't like sports as well. I don't see sports. I don't play sports. That is the reason why I'm fat. Okay, but uh, the point I'm trying to convey is there is something called as Google in uh, cricket. Okay, you can you must have heard about Google eyes that just goes around and just in different ways itself. and it's like totally random and in the same way in cricket as well when you bowl a ball in such a manner that uh, it goes around a random uh, direction itself then that is also called as a googly okay so uh, let me put a googly in front of you what i'm going to do is i am going to remove everything from right over here i'll multiply it by 30 i'll check if it is equal to 6.9 I'll check if it is equal to 6.9. So what I've done right over here is I'm multiplying instead of adding 0.2330 times, I'm multiplying 0.2330 times, and I'm checking if it is equivalent to 6.9 or not. Okay, if I'm able to get an answer of 6.9 or not, whatever we have uh, learned up till now, okay, whatever we have learned up till now, according to that, it should be false, right, guys? whatever we have learned up till now according to that this should be false right whatever we have learned up till now that flows are an approximation to the number they represent we saw some examples we saw that yes that is true but according to that this should be false but when i am running this the answer is coming out to be true when i'm running this the answer is coming out to be true why what is happening what did we understood wrong where did we go wrong see the point is we have not went wrong python has some intelligence inside of it okay python has some intelligence inside of it python does some optimizations in the back end 
Python tries to do some optimizations in the backend itself, guys. And that optimization is what we'll be learning about right now. So what happens right over here? Okay. What happens right over here is that when you're adding 0 0.23, 0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
this is extremely important concept that you need to understand okay repeating it will take 30 minutes of your time more okay so i'm giving you guys an assignment for today i want everybody to re-watch this entire part of the video okay i'm every i want everybody to re-watch the entire okay part of this particular video understand this concept if you haven't done that Okay, pause it up, think about it, understand it, and then come to tomorrow's class. I'm not asking a lot, a lot from you, okay? I'm not asking a lot from you. This concept is extremely important from the purpose of interviews itself, guys. That is the reason why, okay? That is the reason why I'm asking you guys as a favor for yourself, okay? As a favor for yourself to do this, okay? Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Uh, it has already been released the both google and microsoft certificates i guess has already been released is there somebody from the previous bootcamp who is here in this particular bootcamp as well who has got the certificates please do let me know is there somebody from the previous bootcamp who is in this bootcamp who has got the certificates please do let me know so that i'm able to understand the certificates have been sent or not for the previous full stack development bootcamp uh, that we had Please do let me know, guys. Aditya V has got the certificates. Good. Anybody else? Uh, Divika has got the certificates. Bharat Joshi has got the certificates. Okay, so those people who are there from the previous bootcamp have got all the three certificates, right? Okay, if some of the certificates haven't been sent, I think so it would be still in the process itself. So it will take some time to send these certificates because we do it in batches. We are not able to uh, send all the certificates as once. So maybe it is happening in batches. So it will take some time to get these certificates out to you guys. But I think so most of the uh, certificates have been sent. Okay. Uh, no issues in that guys. So let's continue from right over here guys. I'm so sorry for that guys. Another particular uh, data type that you must have seen right now. Is this true and false value that we were getting? Okay. Is this true and false values that we were getting right over there? Okay. These values are also very important guys. These values are also another type of data that we have to deal with. Okay. So this type of data, true and false values is something that we need to understand and use as well guys. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. I'm so sorry guys, my throat is not well at all. So like I'm coughing a bit. I know that some of you are wearing some uh, headphones and everything and it would be uh, hurting you guys. But I'm so sorry for the same. Okay, so these are also called as Boolean data. Okay, these are also called as Boolean data itself, guys. Now, Boolean data are also of two types itself. They are also of two types. Okay, that is true and false. Okay, it is true and false. There is no other Boolean data type that is there. Okay? There is no other Boolean data type that is there, guys. Okay, so uh, right over here. Right over here, I am creating a Boolean data type. Now, please make sure that when you are creating a Boolean data type, the T and F of true and false should be capital the t and f of true and false should be capital guys okay please always remember this t and f of true and false should be always capital so if i'm creating python awesome that's true documentation bad that's false okay so i can create boolean data type so easily you must have learned about boolean data types a type of boolean data types in your 11 standard physics that is zeros and ones Okay, ones are also referred to as true values, zeros are also referred to as false values, guys. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? You must have heard about in physics zeros and ones that exist. Okay, so zero is the uh, false value, one is the true value, guys. Okay, so right over here, we can use that to compare different things. Okay, for example, is 3 greater than 1, guys? Is 3 greater than 1? Yes, 3 is greater than 1, so the answer will be true. Okay, if I'm on this particular line of code, you will be able to see that the answer is true right over here. Similar to that, you are having greater than, and you are having greater than equal to that you can check. 
then you are having less than then you are having less than equal to that you can check you are having equal to equal to that basically checks if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not okay if you want to check if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not then you are having not equal to that basically checks if the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side so is 3 not equal to the uh, to 1 okay is 3 not equal to 1 yes 3 is not equal to 1 so the answer would be true right over here these are called as comparison operators because you are comparing to a or like operators to sorry to operands to get the answer that is a boolean value okay they are uh, comparing to operands to get the uh, boolean value <laughs> are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys Similar to that, you are having another type of data, uh, another type of operators that are also called as logical operators. Do you guys remember logic gates from physics? Do you guys remember the logic gates from physics? You had the AND gate, you had the OR gate, you had the NOT gate, you had the XOR gate. Okay. Do you guys remember these gates from physics, guys? Please let me know wherein you had an AND gate then it was something like uh, x, y and then uh, AND uh, operation on it so if x and y are 1 then the answer would be 1 if the x and y are 1 and 0 then the answer would be 0 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 where 1 represents 2 values and uh, 0 represents for uh, false values okay so these are called as logical operators guys these are called as in physics you learned about it as logic gates here they are called as uh, logical operators okay please do remember this <coughs> please do remember this guys okay so right over here you can use these logical operators as well let us refer to this particular question to be able to understand it okay so rent is 1200 rupees guys rent is 1200 rupees right over here is affordable is equal to rent greater than 1000 and rent less than 2000 so let us replace the rent uh, by variable by its value we'll be replacing the rent variable by its value so that we are easily able to understand it okay <clears throat> so right over here 1200 is greater than uh, 1000 is 1200 greater than 1000 yes guys that's true so this will be true okay is 1200 less than 2000 yes 1200 is less than 2000 so this will also be true okay then we are having true and true that is one and one okay we are having true and true so that is one and one so the answer should be true the final answer should be true according to us so let us check that let us check that let us represent the original question let us print out is affordable let us print out is affordable and as you are able to see we are getting true as the answer we are getting true as the answer guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Our system showing true or false. We have to print it. Yes, as we are able to see we have printed is affordable. Okay. <coughs> are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. Now the exact same question if I am putting this inside. So we know that this is true, right? We know that this is true. If I'm putting it in the bracket and putting not in front of it, okay? I'm putting not in front of it. We know that this entire value is true. We know that whatever is present inside of the bracket is true, right? So this is true. So what is not true? Okay, what is not true? Not true is false, right guys? Not true is false. So this answer should be false, okay? So let's check that as well. So if I'm running this particular line of code, our answer should be false and our answer is coming as false as well. So this is how you can use logical operators as well as your comparison operators to do different things. Jamin, like I said, just two minutes ago that like we are printing out false by writing is affordable. Okay, we are printing out false by writing the print statement and putting is affordable right away here. That is how you need to print it. Okay. <coughs> Great guys.
So just the exact same question of the not one itself, we have already done that. Okay. I'm not able to talk a lot, guys. So I'm going to show you guys the attendance link for today. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, uh, what is the assignment that <clears throat> what is the assignment that I've given to you guys today, guys? Can you guys let me know? Can you guys let me know what is the assignment that I've given to you guys today? Can you guys let me know? That would be great. Can you guys <coughs> let me know? <coughs> So not just to rewatch the video, just rewatch the first few minutes of the video itself where the main interview question has been covered. Okay. I'm not asking you to, even if you have understood it, just watch it once again. Okay. It will just after the class itself, once you filled up the attendance, just give 20 minutes of your life to watch that first, because that question is extremely important for you guys to understand. Okay. Because it is a question that will definitely come into an interview if you are going for a data scientist, a data analyst, a data engineer, any a Python interview, a software engineering interview, any interview that you are going for related to Python, data science, AI, machine learning, this, <coughs> this question is becoming in, like it is being asked like a compulsory question itself for big companies. So please just take out 20 minutes of your time, watch that particular part, understand that co entire concept, okay? Uh, thank you so much guys for understanding that. This is something that I'm like, I'm just providing it for you guys, that you guys don't face a problem at a later point of time. And uh, it feels great to actually like at a later point of time, so students are like, sir, you said that it will be coming and it is like, it came in the exam itself. So that is the reason. That is the reason why I'm telling you guys to just go through it, guys. Okay. So right over here, I'm showing you guys the attendance for today. Okay. It will be closed exactly at 8.33. Okay. It will be closed exactly at 8.33, guys. Okay. Set an alarm for 8.33. This link will be closed. The attendance will be closed exactly at 8.33 guys. Okay. <clears throat> Siddhesh, uh, somebody from my team will definitely reach out to you by today. Okay. I'm so sorry for the delay because we actually are a non-profit organization. So we don't have a lot of people working for us. We do this in part time so that uh, we have our own jobs and everything. So we come in the evening to the of a small ass office and we work from here. It feels nice. Okay. That is the reason why. <laughs> Thank you so much guys. Today somebody will be approaching you today. Okay. I'll just note down your name itself so that I don't forget about it. Okay guys, thank you so much. Uh, the link will be closed at exactly 8.33. So please, they will continue from right over there. Uh, so why Python not use stdio.h and void main statements? Zen, because this is Python, this is not C or C++. That is the reason why. Okay. <clears throat> thank you so much guys. I hope that you will be coming on time from tomorrow. And you'll be coming after watching the interview question, guys. Okay, give it some time. It is really important for you. That is the reason why I'm saying it. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys.